to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. Comment, send them to Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. That's over at uh, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And become a fan of the show on Facebook, over at facebook.greatdetectives.net. Well, uh, this is, uh, we're headed for the last roundup with Charles Russell as Johnny Dollar. Of course, Johnny Dollar is far from over. Uh, another six men um, st- uh, would step up to the plate to pay, uh, play the role. Russell is a bit of an enigma to me. Um, he made his last uh, uh, radio appearance that we have on record in January of 1950. Um he got divorced in 1950, and there's no other uh, record of him till he died in 1985. Um, so he's 32 uh, years old, apparently entertainment uh, career over, um, and uh, then uh, just nothing further until uh, he dies. I'm curious what happened uh, the rest. Um, of, of his life. It's the type of thing I would investigate and write an article or book about uh, if I uh, had the uh, time to head on out to uh, Beverly Hills to look into it. I think it's possible he may have stayed in entertainment in some form uh, as a writer, performer, but done so under a different name. Uh, that is, you know, That could have been suggested, or he could have just gotten in uh, by him being in Beverly Hills rather than back in New York where he uh, came from. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a mystery to me. Um, if anybody has any additional light to shed on the life and times of Mr. Charles Russell, uh, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, we may see Mr. Russell again. I did find, uh, even though the main movie I'm aware of him starring in, um, the Inner Sanctum really wouldn't fit with our podcast. There was another movie he appeared in uh, from 1946 that might work for us, and I will watch that and let you know. It's got some really good reviews on IMDb. It's public domain, and uh, it sounds like the type of thing uh, I might enjoy and you might enjoy as well. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to get into today's episode in just a second. Before we do get started... Um, I want to remind you, a lot of people are going to be making uh, travel plans for the new year. Uh, You're going to be uh, heading out on vacation, going to weddings, um, uh, uh, heading out to uh, theme parks, going out to Beverly Hills to research uh, the the life and times of an old-time radio star. Well, whatever you do, remember uh, to make sure that you get a great deal on your travel arrangements. Remember, johnnydollarair.com. That's johnnydollarair.com, uh, which is Priceline, where you get the ability to name your price on hotels, airline tickets, even more, as well as uh, being able to choose from some great published specials. So go to johnnydollarair.com. Now, without any uh, uh, further ado, we're going to get into... It's time for the Haiti Adventure Matter. Let's go ahead, we'll listen, then we'll come back. The encyclopedia says that the island of Haiti can be called San Domingo, Santa Domingo, or Hispaniola. Well, after my visit there, I could suggest a few more things they can call it, but they probably wouldn't get past the censors. <laughs> This is another in the adventures of America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. At insurance investigation, Johnny Dollar is only an expert. At making out his expense account, he's an absolute genius. Expense account submitted by special investigator, Johnny Dollar. To Home Office, American Federated Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Harvard Huntington, General Manager. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during my assignment in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Or, the nights may be black down there, but the magic is blacker. Expense account, item one, $15 for a pair of tickets to see the show Detective Story at the Hudson Theater, New York which I never got a chance to use, 
since I was sitting in the living room of your Hartford home, properly at curtain time. I want to thank you for coming out here. Well, that's all right, sir. Sorry to break into your evening like this, but since I have, I'll get right to the point. Fine. Perhaps you've heard of the Gordon family here in Hartford. Well, what I see on the society page is while I'm flipping back to the sports section. But I've noticed the name. Diamond studded, aren't they? Yeah, immensely wealthy. Pillars of society and, surprisingly, quite a proper family. Oh. It is all but one of the sons, Ralph. The heavy drinker, complete waster, ne'er to will. A blot on the old escutcheon, eh? Yes. Continually getting into one scrape or another. Now he's done it again. I take it that you're not worried about Ralph the man, but about Ralph the policyholder. Well, to put it bluntly, yes. I don't think it's unethical for a company to protect its interests. In this case, the policy is in the amount of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Payable to his death to charity or to his wife if he's married. Yeah, that's quite a piece of paper. Yes, to be quite candid, I rue the day it was issued. But the point is this. Ralph Gordon, at last report, is dying aboard his yacht at Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Oh, you don't need me, Mr. Huntington. You need the Mayo Clinic. Dollar, yeah. I hesitate to even mention this in the presence of a sane man, but from everything we can learn, young Gordon is not dying from any known malady. He's dying as a result of a... Well, it's pure nonsense. He's... Supposed to be dying as the result of a voodoo curse. Now, anyone with any sense... Now, wait a minute. Where'd you get your information? From his older brother, Thomas. He's a doctor. He's down there in Haiti with Ralph. I want you to go down and debunk this thing, Dollar. Find out what's wrong. Why, any sane man knows there's no such... Mm, voodoo. You don't believe in it, do you? No. Not unless I see it working. Expense account, item two, $148.70, Hartford to port prince via airplane. A expense account item three, $32.50, tropical clothes. They didn't fit me, but they fit the weather. And uh, item four, 25 bucks, spent while I browsed the waterfront bars in port prince looking for somebody oh, who knew where the Gordon yacht was moored. When glass, I found him, he not only knew Ask that, he first. knew everything. Ask me first. My name's Cab Reagan, and I've been here since before repeal. Give up my citizenship, I did. With the help of a couple of prohibition agents. Oh, you don't say. Uh-huh. And I figure on sailing out in the final days right here. What do you want with the Gordon craft? I want to see the owner, Ralph Gordon. How do I get to it? Oh, I reckon you pay me to row you out to her. My dinghy's down at the foot of the pier. Just a short hail from where we're at. Oh, well, good. Come on, let's let's shove off now. Uh, just wait till it down my ration here. I... <coughs> that don't put me ship shape. What'd you say you wanted with that schooner? You figuring on buying her? Thanks for the compliment, pal. Listen, if I bought a boat today, it would have to be a surplus life raft. Now, I told you I want to talk to Gordon. Friendly visit or uh, other kind? I'm beginning to see how you know so much about this island. Well, never question, never learn. Remember that, Sonny? Yeah. Yeah. This way. Veer off to starboard. No, sir. Never question, never learn. Yep. Well, I'm an insurance investigator, and a company sent me down here to look things over, including Gordon. Something wrong? I don't know yet. What do you know about him? A jug full, sonny, a jug full. Stood into the harbor about two months back. No sooner dropped his hook than his crew started taking the pierhead leap. <laughs> Everybody jumped at the bosun for reasons of his own. Why did they leave him? Because he was half seas over all the time. You navigate with sextant, a compass, and parallel ruler, Sonny. Not with a double shot and a water chaser. You get the drift? Yeah, they were afraid to sail. Huh? Aye, that's the line of it. And if you had ever piled into a reef, you'd feel the same. That, yeah. Here we are. Oh. That's my dinghy down at the bottom of that ladder. There's Gordon's yard out there. You see her? Oh, yeah. That uh, tug's passing the stern of her now. Yeah, I say. That's a lot of boat. Yeah. She carries a suit of sail like a grain clipper. <laughs> Wait till you see her close up. She's as dirty as a garbage scow. <laughs> Sonny, they're close enough. Hey, anybody aboard? 
Hey, aboard the yacht. Anybody home? Yes? What do you want? If the ship was dirty, I didn't notice. It may have had good lines, too, but it couldn't have touched what stood at the rail wearing clam diggers, an off-the-shoulder T-shirt, and a Caribbean tan. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, there's a grim hole for you. Yeah. That'll be his wife. Yeah. His wife? Oh. Can I, uh, cowboy? Who are you? What do you want? I'm Johnny Teller from Hartford. I want to talk to Ralph. Oh. Why, well, yes, and I guess you'll have to come aboard. Here. I'll swing the stern into the ladder. Okay. There. There you be. Oh. oh. Steady now. Yeah. Steady, steady. Okay, Captain. You wait for me, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Well, how are things in Ralphie's old hometown? Uh, cold. But uh, not as cold as this reception. Don't let it throw you. What is it? A friendly drop-in? Business? Or just plain snooping? It's the last. I'm Edwina. The wife they haven't heard about at home. Oh, congratulations. Now I know why you like to wear your shoulders bare. The better to keep a chip on them. If you're through being sharp, I'll let you hear what's left of my husband. Come on. Through here. Okay. Ralph, Ralph, you've got a visitor from Hartford. Get away from this cabin, you dirty little gold digger, and take your visitor with you. Wine's all gone. Why don't they send another case of wine? <laughs> there you are, chum. You've got the door locked. They'll stay that way till he runs out of wine. You heard enough? Yeah. Enough to know how you acquired your charming attitude. Forget it. I walked into it with my eyes wide open. Let's get back out on deck. The light's better for throwing bobs at each other. Yeah, sure. It sounds like fun. Well, do I have to help you off, though? Not until you help me by answering some questions. I'm an insurance investigator, and I was sent down here by the company that holds a policy on your husband's life. Oh, what should I do, Fink? The story they got was that Ralph was dying from some kind of a voodoo curse. They don't believe it, and neither do I. Why not? That might be true. Uh, huh? Well, some old dame, they call her Maria Lysel. She came out to the boat. She yelled some things at him, and when Ralphie threw a bottle at her, she swore she'd put a curse on him. How'd they hear about that back in Hartford? Ralph's brother, Dr. Thomas Gordon, told them. You know him? Yeah, we hate each other. I wonder why he told them. Maybe because he thought somebody who'd be better off with Ralph dead, was using Maria LaSalle's curse as a cover-up. How would you stand as his widow? Get off this boat. Get off. Never mind the act. You're his beneficiary. Or didn't you know? I said get off. What's the trouble, Eddie? Oh, him. Yo, come here, will you? All right. Who's the boarding party? Just get him off him. I'll see you in my cabin. Sure, honey. Anybody gets you this upset, it'll be a pleasure. Well, mate, do you walk or dive? Save your strength for the last scene, Goliath. I was just leaving. Expense account, item five, three dollars. Paid to Camp Reagan as water taxi fare. Item uh, six, 80 cents. Land taxi fare to Hotel Francois. An up-at-the-heels hangout for not only the best in tourists, but also Brother Thomas Gordon, M.D. Yes? I'm Johnny Dollar, Dr. Gordon, from Hartford. I... Oh, yes, Dollar. I've been expecting you. They wired me you were coming down. Come in. Thank you. Oh, please make yourself comfortable. Uh, could I offer you something? <laughs> Nothing but some brotherly advice. Why, certainly. You know, I, I feel like a stupid fool for not being able to handle this thing myself. So, now that you're here, you call on me for anything. And have you seen Ralph? I tried to, but he locked himself in his cabin. Uh -huh. Tell me. As a medical man, how do you digest this voodoo curse story? Why, it's ridiculous. Good heavens, this is the 20th century. Uh, I, I do think that science some, uh, doesn't know everything it would like to know about voodoo and black magic. There are stories supposedly true, but any victim would have to have a highly susceptible mind. 
Mm. Now, I know my brother, Mr. Dollar. His, his mind is susceptible only to his own whims and fancies. Well, then what's the matter with him? Now, that's it. I, I don't know. He's drawn within himself. He seems to be searching almost insanely for escape through alcohol. Hasn't anybody thought of putting him on the wagon? Well, it's a horrible idea, but I've heard it works. I don't think this is the time for it. He's suffering mentally and needs release. Well, that leaves us with only one thing to think about. No matter how thin you cut it, it's still voodoo. Well, I'm a man of science, Mr. Dollar. I I'd make hypocrisy out of all my knowledge and training if I attacked the problem from that direction. But, but please, you let me know what you learn. Hmm? <laughs> Expense account, item seven. Four dollars. Rental of horse and cart in which my walking tourist guide, Cap Riggin, and I jolted out of town in search of Maria LaSalle. Something made me feel like I was riding my last mile in a tumbrel en route to the guillotine. The moonlight was fighting a losing battle against an army of storm clouds that were sweeping in. And then to make it worse, I heard a drum. You there, Sonny? Yeah. Uh, sort of a tired Gene Krupa. Means we're getting close to Maria's headquarters. Is uh, she the only one around here? Yep. None of the good Hugans reforms in her territory. She's too mean. Oh, great. <laughs> What's the matter? Eh, we're here. That's the path. Over there by that gnarled old tree. From here on, you plot your own course. This is close enough for me. Oh, me too. Well... How do I know I can't put a curse on her? I've never tried. Smooth sailing, Sonny. The path ran along the edge of a field of sugar cane. On the other side was a solid wall of jungle. First, I smelled some feathers burning. Then I heard the chant. There was an opening in the wall of jungle that led to a small clearing, and just before the moon was smothered by another cloud, I saw a shack. Little clouds of smoke curled out through an open door, and I could see the glow of a fire on the floor inside. Maria, I want to talk to you. Who is it? Comes to the house of Maria. My name wouldn't mean a thing to you, but what I have to say will. Can I come in? Andre, what is this word of so great importance to stop Maria? All I know about voodoo is I don't believe it. Papa, neighbor. I've come to you because I haven't gotten any answers from anybody else. I want to know what's behind this so-called curse you put on Ralph Good. You don't believe. You let me make you believe it. Ralph Gordon, he died tonight in the wind and rain. And for you, I have magic now. Look, regard my fire. You will see, you will believe this world. I couldn't see what she'd thrown to the fire. She'd reached behind her for it. But when the smoke from it whirled around me, it seemed to grab my throat and squeeze. I stumbled back to the door. I hadn't believed in voodoo when I'd come in, but going out, I wasn't so sure. <coughs> In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Johnny Dollar. But first, the two Orange Bowl teams, Santa Clara and Kentucky, will be honored by Vaughn Monroe and his CBS caravan tonight. Vaughn and his great band will play favorite songs of the two Orange Bowl teams. Be sure to hear Vaughn Monroe's caravan, followed by the Gene Autry Show on most of the same CBS stations tonight and every Saturday night. Now with our star, Charles Russell, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. My throat burned. My eyes were looking at each other. My lungs felt like a pair of deflated footballs. And the blood in my head was pounding a better and louder rhythm than that drum. I staggered around the heavy jungle there, and when I could breathe again, I gulped in enough to lift the Graf Zeppelin. By that time, I was cool enough to get hot in anger. Like a 
back of the shack. Maria had either disappeared into space or flown the coop. The atmosphere was not quite deadly. And I crossed over to where she had been squatting. She hadn't left much of what she'd smoked me out with, but she'd left enough to swing things back from the world of black magic into the world of logic. A few shreds of photographic film on the dirt floor. And film made of cellulose and nitrates not only takes pictures... It puts out nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide when it's burned. A combination that would live up to the demands of any gas chamber. The captain rowed me out to the Gordon yacht. This time I boarded without a hail. Ralph was still in a bad mood as I started to pass his cabin. Why don't they send the wine? Empty! Empty! His antics inside the cabin sounded interesting, but not half as interesting as the conversation coming from Edwina's cabin. Dear Edwina, the little wife no. they didn't know about at home. I can't take much more. I'm telling you, we can't go on with this. Well, this is Thompson. You having a change of heart. Well, that's what happened. Not so sure that makes any difference. Maybe you're in too deep to back out. How would you like it if I spilled the whole thing? Well, what difference does it make? You're better than landing in a Haitian prison with your motive showing. Think it over, Angel. I'll be in my sack when you make up your mind. How wrong can you be? See you later, hon. Since I've been on the receiving end of so many surprise sluggings, this was almost a poison. What are you doing on this ship? Get off. Oh, no. None of that intriguing conversation I just heard. How much did you hear? If I added it to that gas assault Maria LaSalle threw at me... It'd be enough to nail you and love a boy here for conspiracy to commit murder. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the point is, I know what you two were talking about. Oh, listen to me. You've got to believe me. I don't have to. But try me anyway. Well, I... I admit that him and I... Well, it was because Ralph turned into a wino after we were married. Oh, well, this probably marks the first time in history that an icicle melted in port of prince Please let me finish. When my marriage went to pieces, I, I had to do something or go crazy. See, Ralph drinking up all the champagne on the island was just more than I could take. I was going to divorce him and, and leave with him, but we weren't going to murder him. Chapter one has so many holes in it, it would have been printed by a punch press. You don't worry about landing in prison with your motive showing when all you're planning is divorce. Oh, yes, you do when people are waiting for your husband to die under mysterious circumstances. That's why I was trying to make him go away. If Ralph died, who'd look any farther than the erring wife? Can you lock this cabin from the outside? Yeah. What are you going to do? You're not going to lock me in? No, just your playmate. You're coming with me. Where? To Maria LaSalle's. I want to catch your reaction when she sees you. You don't believe me. No. With 150000 at stake, I don't even believe myself. There's a shack. Go ahead. Go on in. Oh, is he? Come to the door of Maria. Oh, are you a woman? Well, Mr. Donald, are you satisfied? Not quite. And you who don't believe, why are you here? You wish again to see the power of my smoke? Let's drop the act, Maria. I know what you threw into the fire. It was my book of smoke. Yeah, well, a good man from the police laboratory can sift enough out of those ashes to know it was film. What is this you say? I say that I've got enough on you, you old fake, to put you in the local pokey. Who dares to speak this to Maria? And that's where you're going to go if you don't cooperate. That's a promise. What is it you want? Did somebody put you up to this cursed business that Ralph Gordon is supposed to be under? With a man of your age. Who was it? I, I do not know. Now go. That is all. It's not enough. What was his name? I, I don't know the name. What did he look like then? My eyes are closed. Nuts. Come on. No, Taking no. you into town, I'm to drag you by the hair. No, don't touch me. I will tell you how it is. It is true. I do not know the name or the face. He comes to me. He asks me when comes the next rain and wind. I tell him last night. But it is tonight. The storm comes with the sea. He tell me he needs storm to close portholes in the ship. Huh? He say, if I bring this curse, I will be the best huga on Haiti because it kill white man. That is difficult. That is all. Now you go. How about the film for the fire? Did he give it to you? This is true. Not long before you come. Well, get rid of it, Granny, before you lose your license to operate. 
Now, you go. Maria will be along. Papa! Okay, Mrs. Jordan. Let's not stay for the music. Did you make head a tail out of what she said? Hey, look. look. What, what goes into your husband's cabin? Nothing but food and wine. Mostly wine. Well, who fixes his meals? I do. Our cook left us. Well, what about the wine? Huh? Where does that come from? You said it was champagne, didn't you? Yeah. It always comes from the same place. Liquor shop in town, a case at a time. Oh, nothing makes any sense. What are you going to do? All I can do, try every angle. But that's not all I'm going to try in that liquor shop. <laughs> Expense account item eight, four fifty, two quarts of rum the purchase of which helped loosen the tongue of the proprietor who had been supplying Ralph Gordon champagne. Which wine? Uh, a case at a time, packed in dry ice. That was and the that. words that yes, poured out weren't exactly intoxicating, but they sent me staggering to the nearest phone. Yes? Hello? Hello, Dr. Gordon. This is Dollar. Good heavens. Dollar, I've been wondering about you. What have you learned? First, tell me this. What would happen to a man if he was in a ship's cabin on a stormy night with all the portholes closed and there was a lot of dry ice in there with him? What? What was that? A small room. No ventilation. A lot of dry ice. A, a lush maybe passed out. What would happen? Oh, good Lord. Dry ice has solidified carbon dioxide. If enough of it evaporated into the room... The lush would not be bothered by a hangover the next morning because he wouldn't wake up, right? Exactly. The gas, although not toxic, would force the oxygen from the atmosphere and the result would be asphyxia. What are you getting at, Dollar? That curse your brother is suffering from is very scientific. The champagne he's been getting has been chilled by dry ice. About five pounds per case. And one case went out to the yacht just before the storm broke. Good Lord. Well, it may be just coincidence, but Ralph's wife and that bosun. Yeah, I know. For a bosun, he'd make a very good chemist. Well, send for a pull motor, will you? If it's too late for your brother, maybe I can use it. Flying fish sailor, I hail from Hong Kong. Hey, Cap. Blow, Cap. blow. Come on, Cap. Ha, <laughs> ha, sonny. Send him around, George, from a shipmate and me. <laughs> this is rum Never weather, mind the round, sonny. Cap. You gotta roll me out to that yacht again. Huh? What do you take me for, a blasted galley sleeve? Come on, My Cap. My back is about to go down from all the roaring in this... 20 bucks. In this... What'd you say? I didn't think it could rain any harder than it had, but it did. We would have been drier swimming. And the visibility was so bad, I would have had to have a seeing eye sealed to find the ship. But about 20 minutes out, Cap spotted a riding light. Here's your lie, silly. We were on target. But so was somebody else. The searchlight stabbed out at us. Hey, 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 hey. This sounds like prohibition days. Who's giving us a broadside? I can't tell yet. I'll lay a pelican hood over his head if I get my hands on him. I... Hey, Cap, what's the matter? Get my left leg. Right. Cap, get down to the bottom. Yeah. I'm going over the side. To me, swimming is a pastime to be practiced only under ideal circumstances, in a pool, and preferably in the company of a well-filled bikini suit. But there was nothing to do but swim, so I swam. I tried to remember how many shots had been fired, and that's where I made my mistake. There was a lull in the shooting, which I took to mean the gun was empty. I put my head down in the best Weissmuller style and thrashed my way to the ladder. But when I got there, the first thing I saw after I'd shaken the water out of my eyes was the muzzle of a rifle. The face looking down the barrel at me belonged to brother Thomas Gordon, M.D. Sorry, Dollar. Killing you wasn't in my plan. But now it'll have to be done. I wasn't surprised at that, but I was surprised at what happened. I was waiting for a bullet to come my way, but instead the doctor did. Ah! Are you all right, Dollar? Yeah, yeah, I am. Something wrong, the Turkish towel will cure. I'll thank you later for spoiling his aim. Get a hook on the doctor. He's right. got a prize fish. Don't let him get away. I grabbed a fire axe out of his case on my way to Ralph Gordon's cabin. If I needed ventilating, I knew one quick way to do it.
I didn't check for oxygen. I took a deep breath, held it, and went in. The cabin was littered with wine bottles, and in one corner, in an open case, was the dry ice that was in the process of cooling Gordon off for good. He was stretched out on his bunk. I hefted him to my shoulder. Use the last of my breath getting him out of there. Expense account, item nine, $30. Cover charge at a hospital where I put the revived Gordon under the care of a doctor, not his brother, who happened to be resting in a jail cell at the time. His motive hadn't been the insurance money... He figured to gain quite a chunk as the only heir to the Gordon fortune, if he could have taken care of Brother Ralph. Uh, item 10, same as item 9. Same hospital where they patched up Cap Riggin. Item 11, $148.70. Return trip to Hartford. And uh, expense account item 12, $40. An ounce of voodoo perfume for the lovely but uh, sometimes chilly Edwina. Maybe if she tries that kind of magic on her husband, he'll spend less time with a bottle, Joy, and uh, more with her kind. Uh, expense account total, $424.70. Signed, yours, uh, truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Charles Russell. Tonight's script by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd was produced and directed by Ralph Rose. Featured in the cast were Betty Lou Gerson, Sylvia Sims, Ben Wright, Ken Christie, Howard Culver, Dawes Butler, and Tim Graham. The special music is written and conducted by Leif Stevens. Be sure to be with us at the same time next week when another unusual expense account is handed in by... $20. Were you right? Were you wrong? Did you know it was Buster Keaton playing Sing It Again's Phantom Voice these last few weeks? Well, now there's a new Phantom riding the airways on Sing It Again. And for identifying him tonight, some CBS listener can win $50,000 in cash and prizes. Radio's largest jackpot. Phone calls go out from coast to coast, so be ready for the new Phantom when Sing It Again comes your way over most of these same CBS stations later tonight. Now stay tuned for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, meets adventure every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Uh, Johnny Dollar, marriage counselor. I, I, I like that. Um, uh, also, uh, um, I, I, um, and I'm referring to the, uh, get to the perfume on the expense account. I guess yeah, that's a, an arguable long-term expense of the insurance company. Keep the guy alive longer and paying his premiums. By the way, that the sea captain uh, who kept rowing him out sounded a lot like Harry Morgan. Uh, but Morgan was not credited in the cast, so I guess not. Um, this was, uh, in terms of the scientific thought that went behind uh, the episode, this was uh, really well done. Um, I thought the uh, I thought the plot of the uh, the murder was was very clever. The dry ice uh, killing. Um, I thought that. Um, I I also thought that uh, the knowledge used uh, behind the uh, voodoo um, was, uh, uh, in terms of that being the result of uh, uh, of uh, the uh, chemicals from the photos, was was pretty good as well. Well, um, this will ra uh, wrap up uh, Charles Russell, and he always approached these moments kind of bittersweet. Uh, on one hand, I'm sorry we don't have any more Charles Russell episodes, unless we have um, 
a lost episode show up, and there's certainly some of those that could come up. But you're going to enjoy the Edmund O'Brien uh, series that we're going to start bringing you um, on uh, Friday. It's yours truly, Johnny Dollar, but it's a different uh, spin on the character. Really a, a very good uh, reinvention. Uh, and one of the tougher characters in the world of hard-boiled fiction on the radio, we're going to meet Edmund O'Brien's Johnny Dollar next Friday. All right, well, I want to say a special thank you to Lise, um, who uh, went ahead and sent sent us a very nice tip, and, I'm, and, I've, and, and I've sent her uh, access to, a, uh, to our premium site for a year, which we do for all donations of $7 or more. Uh, Lise writes in, uh, thanks for the great show, Adam. I think it's gotten even better uh, since you started. I listen every day without fail. Thank you, Lise. Richard Carding writes over on Facebook. Hi, Adam. I hope this is the right way to do this, but I just had a question for you. I happened to listen to the last Jeff Regan and heard the name Betty Lugerson and thought I'd heard it before. Then, lo and behold, I listened to Johnny Dollar, and she was in that one, too. Can you tell us a bit more about her, please? Keep up the good work. Facebook is a perfectly great question uh, to post your, or great place to post your questions. And uh, I'd love to tell you about Betty Lugerson. Uh, Gerson uh, w uh, was a voice uh, voice actress, uh, character actress, kind of like uh, Virginia Gregg. The big difference with Gerson is she never had the, the big starring role. Uh, when we talk about Virginia Gregg, uh, we can uh, point to and say she did a lot of voices, uh, but she uh, starred regularly as Richard Diamond's uh, girlfriend, as Johnny Dollar's uh, girlfriend during the last uh, couple seasons. Uh, she was the second uh, actress to uh, play Brooksy on Let George Do It. So we've got some starring roles to point to. Betty Lou Gerson didn't really have that. Um, she spent uh, th 31 years as a voice actress from 1935 to 1966 and appeared in a lot of shows. Uh, she, uh, her, I guess if there was a main role uh, for her, it was on Mr. President, uh, the radio show, uh, where she was the president's uh, secretary. Uh, the show, Mr. President, was actually about all of the presidents of the United States. Um, and uh, the president was played by Edward Arnold, and it was stories from all of their lives and history. So that was probably her big role in radio. However, what she is best known for uh, is her role in animation. Um, she, uh, if, you've, if you've seen 101 Dalmatians, you've heard Betty Lou Gerson. Uh, she did the voice of Cruella de Vil uh, in, that, uh, in that movie. And so she's been heard millions of times, but uh, Betty Lou Gerson was Cruella de Vil. Um, and uh, she retired, actually, in 1966 at age uh, 52 uh, and continued to use her voice um, until permanent retirement. It's almost kind of sad. Uh, she used it uh, in an answering service. However, in 1997, uh, uh, she was actually brought out of retirement after Disney honored her as a Disney legend in 1966. And she uh, did uh, the voice of Francis the Fish in Cats Don't Dance, um, which was her final role before, uh, and uh, then she passed away in 1999 at age 85. So that's Betty Lou Gerson, and thanks for the, thanks for the uh, question. It worked out really good, because uh, she was in uh, this week's episode of Johnny Dollar as well. All right, and I uncovered yet another detective series. Uh, it's somewhat remarkable. Um... But um, I keep thinking I've identified all the old-time radio detective series, and then I just found another one. Uh, this one is called Pursuit. I posted that on Facebook, and Shannon says, cool, put it in the rotation, dude. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a recommendation. Um, we have got a lot of shows uh, to listen to yet. I did listen to one and decide to use it. Leonidas uh, Witherall, we're definitely going to go ahead with that. That one was kind of funny, a nice little um, a comedy detective story, about seven episodes, so we'll work that in somewhere. 
And for those of you who uh, have the app uh, or have our premium site, uh, you can go ahead and check out the uh, uh, check out an episode of Leodotus Witherall from 1944. Uh, we'll also do Mr. Chameleon. So we will add those to our yes list. A pretty interesting short series. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up today's show. We'll be back on Monday with another episode with an episode of Box 13 and be sure to listen on Friday. We'll uh, be premiering Edmund O'Brien as yours truly Johnny Dollar. And you won't want to miss it. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host Adam Graham signing off.